fun. Thank you. I need the, I need the that thing. I've got show and tell today. Um, hi, I'm Jen Rogan, and I am a costume designer for film and television. I'm gonna get rid of my water bottle here so I can use my good old-fashioned note cards. Um, I am a bit old-fashioned, and in the world of digital, I carry both my iPhone and my Moleskine notebook, because I can't live without it. You might have heard or seen one of the two shows that I work on. I'm gonna talk a little bit about fitting into character and what that means. Girls on HBO, and Orange is the New Black for Netflix. And while Girls has been recognized for its costumes, for Orange, I'm often fielding tweets that look a little bit like this one. This is an anonymous tweet that I composed to protect the identity of any actual tweeters whom I have answered on Twitter. Um, yes, that is true. Oh my goodness, there's a costume designer. Uh, everyone is in uniform on Orange, and this reaction is completely legitimate. And that is because I have found that when I'm really getting it right, the audience, you guys, don't know that I exist. When the costume adds up to the character, and the audience is completely engrossed in the story, the costumes truly are the best supporting artists. But back to the tweets of disbelief. Um, what, they bring up a really good point. What does a costume designer do besides ordering staggering amounts of khaki prison scrubs? Um, I manipulate your emotions. That's what I do. Costume design is the art of translating the information that is in the script it into a character through its clothing and giving you, the audience, visual clues about gender. And this one was tricky because it was both genders in one character. Giving you information about religion. This one's a little more obvious. About orientation. And in this case, specifically sexual orientation. It can also be physical orientation if she's facing up or down. Um, about social status, this character is wearing an expensive suit and the context clues help fill in around the wardrobe. About the occupation, and in this case, a lab coat can tell a lot of a story very quickly. About the emotional state of the character, and I got a lot of tweets about this costume, and it was a t-shirt. That was the whole costume. And sometimes for me, the costume gets to be the comedy. And if you're a fan of girls, you may recognize some of those, uh, some of those <laughs> costumes. When I set out to design a show, I have three processes that are going uh, on simultaneously. And this is where you're gonna get a real nitty gritty look at what I do every six days in the case of girls or every nine days in the case of orange. When I mentioned I start from the script, I really do start from the script. I'm doing these three things based on the script. I'm designing an episode, or the movie, and uh, episodes have increasingly become like movies in a one hour drama. I'm creating a character look, look with a capital L, because it's what the character looks like when you see them on TV. And then I'm also creating very specific looks for specific moments, and those are usually because they're informed by this script. So, starting with the script. These are actual scripts from the shows that I work on, and as you can see, they have my name on them. So if they get shared, everyone knows who did it. No, I will not tell you what happens next season of Girls or Orange, don't ask. Primarily because I don't want to ruin your viewing experience when you actually get to watching that episode next season. My first read is all about first impressions. What's going on in this story? Uh, what's jumping off the page? Is there a nighttime scene? Is the weather cold? Uh, is there a huge party? Is there a huge stunt sequence? Uh, season, time of day, broad strokes for me because those are gonna inform all of the wardrobe choices that I'm making. And then the second read, which is usually the next day, I start with a breakdown. I am a little bit linear and I am very specifically paying attention to every decision that I'm making. So I start with a breakdown. And this is my actual breakdown from the pilot of Orange is the New Black. And that's my secret code, and no, I won't explain that either. Um, I wanna know how many characters are in this episode. I wanna know how many scenes are in this episode. I wanna know how many costumes I'm up against. I also wanna know about something called continuity days, which for us is the same as a story day. The series 24, the entire season was one continuity day, so one story day. I wanna know if I'm up against one day, in which case each costume is gonna take a lot more focus from me, or if I'm up against 18 days, in which case I'm gonna to wanna to focus a little bit more on the look of the character and less on, on each 
very specific individual piece. And then I'm also looking for things like emotional arc and character arc because those want to be in the back of my head as I'm going out to pull the costumes. And then I start creating my characters. So for this character look process, um, portion of my process rather, I'm gonna to talk to you about creating the character look of Piper, who is played by the very brilliant Taylor Schilling on Orange is the New Black. I started with the script, and here you can see actual blurbs from the script that tell you about this character, uh, whether it's actual descriptions in the script notes or whether it's dialogue that the character is saying or another character is saying about this character. And then I also have meetings with my creative team. And in, in my case, Jenji Cohen is God. She knows these characters so much more than I do that she can answer all of these nitty gritty questions that I have when I'm actually going in to create my characters. And then I do also speak with the actor, but that is often much closer to the time of the fitting. So before that happens, I go off and I pull inspiration images. And this is Piper's actual inspiration board. And I call it a board because we used to do them on paper. And on Orange, our creative team is in LA, so we actually do them digitally. And this is my way of having a conversation with our team. Am I getting the look right for the character you wrote? Is this how you thought Piper was going to look? They, we have a conversation, they give me notes, and that's when we go out shopping. We shop everywhere. I find that to really create an authentic character, it is a mix of high and low, old and new, bright and not, and we hit all of our stores, department stores, vintage stores. I have no idea how I did this without Amazon or Zappos or any of those online retailers. We rely on them. Um, and we really do shop soup to nuts. Everything from the foundation, which is the underwear, all the way to the coats and the shoes and the jewelry. Anything that you see on screen, I've had a hand in. Once we get all of that stuff together, we have a fitting. And somewhere in here, I've had a conversation with the actor so that they know what my thoughts on the character are. And we have this very weird moment where we get in the fitting room and neither of us has met in person. And I say, hi, get naked, because that's what happens. Thankfully, actors are used to this. And it's a little less awkward for them because they have fittings all the time. Um, and then we have a brief conversation. I show them what's on the rack and we talk about, are we on the same page? Do we think the same things about this character? I like to pre-pull looks for a big character fitting like a Piper fitting. And I like to start strong. I like to start with a look that I think really is what this character is gonna look like. And for this fitting, I actually started with her orange jumpsuit. And then we very quickly got into actual civilian clothing and the look in the middle, this green and yellow sweater was one of the first looks that we started with. Sometimes I'll start strong in the opposite direction to break the ice or to give the actor something to reject or to let them know that it's okay, I have a sense of humor about this. It's not all gonna be serious suits, particularly if we're not doing a suited character. Um, we try to work accessories into the fitting to give a really complete look to the character. Sometimes we don't quite have that option uh, for time. And then we send photos. I send photos to my creative team to make sure that the clothes on the actor look like the clothes in the inspiration images and that we're actually still following that through line. It's very intentional. And we take out things they don't like and we'll oftentimes adjust directions from those fitting photo notes. And you know it's all working in the fitting room when, and this happened on Friday, we were doing fittings on Friday, at about 148 fittings this week for a flashback sequence we're doing on Orange. And one of my actors started dancing. It was a little one of these. And you know it works. There's a lot of other times where you know it doesn't work, but that is a great moment when you both look in the mirror and think, yeah, that's the character. Now that I have all of this closet, what it happens? They go into a closet and then I look for the right moment in the right episode to help tell the story, to help you feel a certain way about that actor, about that character when they appear on screen. And that brings me to some specific looks. Piper had some very specific looks in our pilot episode that we dress in the fitting. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about a very specific look that came from a very specifically scripted moment in Girls last season. And if you've watched the show, you probably saw this dress. This dress is made of plastic. And before the episode had finished airing, BuzzFeed was tweeting about me wanting to know about this dress. And I had actually given an, inter an interview before the episode had concluded showing this dress. There was a very specific line in the script. First reading of the script, I knew right away I was up against something that was gonna be a bit of a challenge because I couldn't run to Macy's and buy a plastic dress. Well, at least last season. This season there might be plastic dresses out there because we found that the show was having a bit of an impact. Um, that's a very specific thing. I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing there. So we approached this with some inspiration images as well. 
And this was more about research. What kinds of plastic dresses have been done? What kinds of dresses and other materials have been done that can inform what we want to make in this case? And then we looked at things that have actually been worn, things that Lady Gaga wore, things that other actors on red carpets have worn that were actually plastic. And it was very important that we had that transition moment because the dress still needed to be right for character. Marnie's very specific. She tries very, very hard, and she's wearing something that's a very novel material. So for me, it was very important that the silhouette still makes sense to this character. And then we started making it. We dove in, and we actually made four dresses um, for this specific moment. And I don't document my process. I'm too busy doing the process. So Lena's assistant actually came in randomly in the middle of the day to ask a question about some other wardrobe piece or about, a, about something for Lena, and she caught us building this dress. And there's no sewing in this dress, and so she was fascinated with the process <laughs> that we were pounding grommets um, after the fitting into this dress to make it what it is. This was the fitting. We fit our muslins, and muslin is a term usually for, for sample and often because it's made out of muslin, and in this case, it wasn't muslin, it was made out of plastic. Uh, the top, your right, was the dress that Lena picked, and I felt very strongly about the dress on the left, primarily because I was worried that the dress on the right was gonna look like a garbage bag on camera, and I don't usually jump back in and say, guys, I really think something else is gonna be better. But in this case, I did. And Lita and, and uh, Jenny Connor, who's one of our other uh, creative, creative gurus on the show, said, yes, go for it. We love it, absolutely. And then this is what it ended up looking like on camera. We added accessories, we added shoes, we added a handbag. And an unintentional moment that occurred from a completely pragmatic solution was captured on camera. The dress was made in two pieces. When I, when I designed the dress, I knew that Allison was going to be in this dress for a long period of time, and it was likely, because we were shooting in July, going to be above 90 degrees the day that we shot this. It was 97. We were in a loft space in Bushwick that had no air conditioning. So the dress is designed so that the clear black plastic layer can be zipped off, and then we could toss her into a bathroom. Lena and our amazing director, Claudia Weil, thought that that was hysterical and found both the comedy and the deep humiliation in that moment by having Allison as Marnie carry the outer layer of the dress through the subway turnstiles as she was leaving, having not even broken up with a guy she didn't know she wasn't dating. <laughs> Meanwhile, there is an entire other episode happening around this dress. Our boys are going to Staten Island, Jess is depressed, Hannah had a very specific scripted raincoat that we had to find for her, there are guest stars, and I don't know if you can see it, but up here, Booth Jonathan, played by Yorma Tacone, had visited the Marina Abramovic exhibit, so we had to shoot a video of Booth Jonathan going to see Marina Abramovic. There was a lot going on in that episode, and that brings me to putting the episode together. Designing the episode slash the movie. It is a series for me of meetings because that's where I get my information. I'm doing this intentionally based on very specific information. None of it is random. All of it is designed to manipulate how you feel about these characters, how they appear on screen. We start with a concept meeting. That is where we go through this script and the writing team tells us this is what we're doing, these are things to look out for. Then I go into what I call study hall. That's a meeting I have with myself, my clothes, my breakdown, my scripts, and a rack. And I go character by character, scene by scene, and I pull the show. I pull all those clothes together so that I know what my entire episode's gonna look like before I get there. Then I have a meeting with my design team, and this is where I let go a little bit of my control to my team, who I adore because they've been with me long enough that they know my quirks, and they know when I say, I need something pretty and elegant. Every single one of you just had a different idea in your head of what pretty and elegant means. My team knows me well enough to know what my version of pretty and elegant is, and so when I send them out with shopping lists, I get back what I'm looking for. That's that design meeting. Shopping notes for characters we already know, character descriptions of characters that are new to us based on the concept meeting information, based on the script, and based on what I think they should look like. Then a couple days later, we have a meeting with the director. That's the costume and background meeting. Yes, background are important. Background are the fabric of what I do. Because if my first team looks amazing and my background looks like crap, it's gonna take you out of the story. It's gonna have you not believing that our, our talking characters are in the same world as our characters who are in the atmosphere. We talk through every scene, we talk through every group of background, and I get to ask all of my annoying questions like, should Piper still be in her khaki uniform here? 
I'm kidding. I do actually ask that from time to time. Mostly it's about whether or not we should add or subtract a sweatshirt to convey time of day or maybe it's cozy and they're getting ready for bed. And then the last thing we do is a production meeting, and that's a photo of a girl's production meeting from season three. That's right, season three has been shot, it's coming back in January, and the whole production crew gets together to walk through all of the elements one last time before we start shooting. While all this is happening, all three processes are going on, and this is what happens for the six days that we take to prep an episode of Girls, or the nine days we take to prep an episode of Orange. We're waiting for casting so we know which actual bodies, the sizes of those bodies that we'll be dressing. We are prioritizing our schedule. I'm turning in a budget because how much these clothes are going to cost is very, very important to my producers. And then in the middle of all this, between meetings, between shopping appointments, we're fitting, we're altering the clothes that you'll ultimately see on the screen. And sometimes in the case of Hannah, we'll we are altering those clothes to make them look worse than they do in real life. And then we're also making things look older or newer or broken down or dirty or whatever we need them to be to help the audience understand what this character is going through at this moment. The last thing I do is load everything to a wardrobe truck. I have a 53 foot mobile office with racks and racks and racks already established into the truck and a washing machine. And every night before we shoot, I go through the next day's work with my team and make sure that every accessory, every earring, every belt, every sock, every pair of underwear is in place so that we can get our actors dressed the next day to shoot. That's it. It's super anticlimactic, just a little bit like this is. <laughs> If my costume wasn't done yesterday, if it wasn't loaded on my truck, it is not gonna shoot today because we don't have time. If the actor's already there and I don't have clothes for them, I'm out of luck. We wrap it up and I've probably already got my script for the next episode. So while I'm shooting this one, I'm prepping the next one and that's it. So I'm hoping that next time you watch your favorite show or one of my shows or my favorite shows, you have a little more uh, understanding of what happens in, in all of those costumes, they're very intentional. None of them is accidental. And hopefully they'll help you understand what this character is doing and maybe inspire you to uh, make some dressing decisions of your own. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Rogan.